Okay, good to see everybody. Um, yes, actually what we're doing today is so we're continuing a third part in the series called Why is the World So Messed Up? And what can I do about it? So uh, we've done two sessions so far. And in the first one, I kind of described the root traits that caused the problem, which the two extremes are people who are unbridled desire people and power people. We talked about last time from the time of Abraham and the nations of the world that came out from there, because till Abraham, we talked about there was a period of time where God said, anyone could find me. There was no Jewish nation per se. Everyone, there was no, the system was whoever finds God, God's available. That was a 2000 year time limit. Nobody did it. Abraham did it. And then Abraham changes the dynamic. And the nations that come out from there, we have the Jewish nation. And we talked about last time. And then you have um, uh, the Esau, who is the father of Rome, which eventually became Christianity. And you have Yishmael, who is the father of the Arab nation, who eventually became Islam. And we talked about how those two kind of are like the head of the 70 original nations. And they also fit into one of these two problems, either being, you know, um, um, pushed towards lack of boundaries or one who is, you know, because of a desire and wanting, you know, and to come close and this and that, or the opposite of people who want power and control. And, you know, and even the nation state can look and see where they fit. But now we're going into getting up to today. So, Tar, what you asked me before, we're kind of getting there because the world may have gone to new levels of insanity that, um, I don't know, they, 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 they're, uh, they're new levels. There really are new levels of insanity that I, I think in a lot of ways, I, I, it's hard to say worse or better than the terrible generations of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's hard to say worse or better because as I said to you last time, Society became at a certain point much more um, um, cultured, you know, a culture. I mean, the Nazis were very cultured people. They had, they had, you know, they had their music and the things and that, everything, you know. They actually, as I said, they outlawed before they started exterminating Jews and, and, and plus other uh, people they exterminated. Um, before they did that, they outlawed the Jewish law of how to kill the animal, prepare it for eating, uh, in, which is really the most least painful way, but it was called cruel. So the world became cultured, but, you know, a culture is a veneer. You know, I'm very polite, very polite. Okay, but what's going on? So the world in one sense has become more cultured, but because the world has become, in a certain way, really stupider, the things that people think now are are very, very problematic. So I want to get us to what's going on today. So, you know, at the time of what's called the Reformation, the Renaissance, you know, religions, as I said before, people may have had religions and they had their problems and they had their beliefs and all these different things. But then as society decided to enshrine an idea of atheism, and there was no longer maybe an idea of, well, I believe this is what I'm supposed to do. You believe this is what you're supposed to do. How do we get along? Now I have a new belief that sort of atheism has um, propagated. I mentioned Darwin. I mean, Darwin, whether it's atheist or not, it's irrelevant. Darwin, as, as I quoted one time, his friend Aldous Huxley said, he gave atheists an excuse to explain it, because I couldn't explain it before. How'd the world get here? Okay, so now I have some way to, okay, it's an evolutionary fact, it's whatever. <laughs> However, it's not a class in evolution, we can do that sometime. But whatever you say about whatever the story is, it was now, if, you're, if you didn't want to believe in God, or there was a source, or there was a purpose in the world of some sort, then now you have maybe a way to explain it away. Oh, no, it's a random thing. Let's talk about a second. What, what is the conclusion if the world is random? Don't ask you that. Think about it a second. Let's say you get up in the morning 
and you subscribe to this belief that everything is random and it's really meaningless. A guy can walk out, you know, in the street, a safe can fall from the 15th floor, turn into a pancake, and it really doesn't make a difference because there's no right or wrong, there's no good or bad, it's all random. That world is a crazy world. I don't know that the depth of understanding how crazy that is. It, 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 we're talking about a world that evolves now and becomes more and more bizarre, but think about it. It, it, I subscribe to a belief there is a omnipotent, beneficent creator of all that has created the world to give me and everyone in it good, and he directs and controls that world for the purpose of giving good. I mean, if, if that paints your world, my life is purposeful. I... I'm going something good because all purpose was for something good. And everything really makes sense, even though I might not always understand it, but it makes sense. Now, if you subscribe to the other world, this is a cosmic fluke. You mean nothing. You really don't mean anything more than a, than a, than a, a mosquito, really. You, you're, you're an advanced mosquito, but you're not, even, you're not going anyplace. What are you doing? What's going to happen? Okay, so fine. Oh, we're going to, the world's blowing up. We're going to save it now so we can keep doing what we're doing. What are we doing? Well, we, we're drinking and we're having a good time. Okay, great. Great. So that's where you're going. So basically, basically the world subscribes to the belief that you are a contented cow. What is the greatest thing to strive for? I feel good. This feels good to me. So why shouldn't I go and do something that may feel as good to me if it's going to hurt you? There's no purpose. Well, because there's maybe a law. And I'm afraid that if I break the law, you know, like you have more money. I want more money. There's no purpose. There's no right or wrong. So I would take your money, but I can't because there's this policeman. So I better defund the police. So I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to get what I want. Why not? I don't know that we can understand the mindset of a human being who believes there is no rhyme or reason to life. How do you get up in the morning? And if you do get up in the morning, you're probably a dangerous guy. Unless you're one of the, the lucky, beautiful people who go around and they have fun and everyone takes pictures of them and they tell you how to live your life because they're the great philosophical geniuses. That's really what it is. I mean, it's like, you think about it. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. LeBron James is going to tell me what's morality. I mean, <laughs> because you can put a ball in the hoop. Very good. Okay. All right. I mean, the people who tell us what's right and wrong and who to believe and what to believe have absolutely no credentials for any of these things but they're having a good time and they got a platform and you're going to listen to them. So they're going to tell you. So ladies and gentlemen, we, we are here now in America and this is the July 4th weekend. And I got, I got a real problem. I got a real problem. And this is, this is from a, a, a rabbi, a Jew who grew up in America. And I want to have the proper, what's called Hakara Satov gratitude. Because, Ron, I know you're in Australia, and Australia, a lot of the world picked up on a lot of the good things America did back hundreds of years ago. But what did it do? And where did this go crazy? Okay, I don't understand this here. I, if I could change the Constitution, I would change one word. This is what won the Constitution. You have the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of, I would say, pursuit of fulfillment. I say instead of happiness. And why would I say that? Because what, what was happening in the world when the founding fathers of America wanted to go and to build a country? They were being persecuted by the church. You know, everyone else was part. You have to have these beliefs, those beliefs. So they said, listen, listen to this. This is a great idea. 
And, and I would agree to this. I wouldn't say, some people say America is the, the greatest country ever. That's not true. The greatest country was the land of Israel during its holy times. But America is the greatest secular country that ever existed. That it is. There's never been a country that's come along and said, okay, we're going to set something up that is going to give you the right to do what? You know, I, I, I mean, there's one word that Americans really feel excited about. And, and it summarizes what America was and maybe will hopefully again be. And that word is freedom. You hear freedom, you think ah, freedom. So what was America fighting for freedom? What was the freedom they were fighting for? Why was freedom of religion so important? Why was freedom of speech so important? Why are these things so important? Because they understood they were being persecuted because they had different beliefs, whatever. And they understood a human being has to do something and accomplish something that make his life meaningful. And if I believe this is the way to do that and you stop me, that is the greatest destruction of the human being. You believe in God. And this is when you uh, think you have to serve God. So you can't do it. Oh, that's, that's, it's my freedom. You know what's my freedom? It's my freedom because it's my freedom to be what I am. And a human being has the great ability. He's not a cockroach. He's not a monkey. He has the ability to go and say, I believe in certain things that have to happen that I need to do as a person. Whether it's the th what I believe to be true, how I believe to worship, whatever you believe. So America said, you know what? We're going to make this new system. You can come here and you can be free to do what it is that human beings need to do to express what is important to them in the world. And no one can stop you. And we'll have to make the rules because it's a little tricky. Because if you want to express what is good and what you believe, how do you not infringe on someone else's rights? That was the balance. Now, why would I change the word to freedom, life, liberty, and the pursuit of fulfillment? Why would I take the word happiness out? Not because what they, the founding fathers of America made a mistake. I think they were very intelligent people. They even studied some Torah. They were very, very, very wise people. Very, very wise, very smart people. Why would I change the word? Not because of them, because of the idiots today. Because the word happiness that they were talking about was, what is happiness? What is happiness? Just think about it. So what, 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 what's happiness? Well, if I get a big car and a big house and I make a lot of money, I have happiness, right? If I get this, if I get this, if I become this star, I'll have happiness, right? Wrong, right? As Mary saying, no, Mary Sinalachi knows this. That's crazy. But you know what happens? That is what people understand. Happiness is not a thing. It's an object. You can't get the object. What is happiness? Happiness is when I live my life in a way that is meaningful and purposeful, and I'm expressing what I have to, there is a byproduct called I am happy. There's a process. Right? So I got to do I, when I when I know I'm doing the right thing, I know I'm living the right way. I know I'm, I'm I'm being a good person in the proper way that I believe that I know is correct. That I feel deep down is correct. Then I can have a sense of happiness. I'm accomplishing something. I'm doing something. But what they did was they substituted the pursuit of happiness means the pursuit of getting these objects. So you know what? Watch 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 communism. I don't know if you, if you all saw, but this is amazing. The Chinese government actually applauded something that President Biden just said. I don't know if you saw that. It was amazing. President Biden had said about like the, the, the gas companies need to lower their prices. The Chinese government said, ah, finally you got it. Capital, capitalism is based on extortion. They finally, they're on the same page. What, is, what does communism and socialism mean? 
well, the pursuit of happiness, let's change the word now, happiness, which what it means now, the pursuit of the things that I should have, if that's what you're promising me in the Constitution, well, this dude has more than I have. Why shouldn't I be able to go and take what he has? If that's what I'm promised, life, liberty, and the stuff. So let's redistribute it to give, give everyone what they should have. If you take all of Elon Musk's money, how many millions of dollars can you give out to everybody else? This is what's, this is what's happened. Because people misunderstood what is a point in life to do something to believe something, to act in a certain way. And if you, if you, the, the founding fathers of America in their goal was to give you the freedom to be human and to do what it is that humans need to express. But we don't want that anymore. We want the, we want the, the pot of gold at the end. That's what we want. So right now, if that's what I'm guaranteed, so we distribute the money. That's why they come in. That's why, that's why they're, that's why it's, hey, let's defund the police. It says in the, in the Talmud, in the Medri, in the Mishnah, which it says that if it wasn't for the, 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 the fear of the government, people would swallow each other alive. And believe you me, they know that. Everyone will call us defund the police. The goal is because we're going to like, this is, we're, we got a different world order. And that I was telling you before, and that's what goes on. And that's why I, I said about atheism, because it fans the fire of this. You're not going any place. I, I don't know, you know, again, the, the, you know, when they, when they wrote the Constitution, I, I'm, I'm sure there were smart people, there were dumb people, I, you know, not everyone was. But the idea that they wanted to, they had beliefs of what they thought was true and what they thought was right. And they, they, and they needed the freedom to do that. That was because... That's what it means to be a human being. Because I'm going someplace. What's the right thing to do? But if there is no right or wrong or reason or rhyme, and the world is random, and then you live whatever, 80 years, and you drop dead, and that's it. So, well, you might as well, you know, I don't know, get as much goodies as you can. That's what's going on. I, 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 I want to say something now, and, and, I, and I, 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 I'm a little bit hesitant to say this, because when Moshe was commanded to go to Pharaoh, Hashem said to give him honor as the monarch, because there is a certain honor you need in a, um, a position of being the leader. It's not just a leader of a country. is not just random. He's not. You need to understand this. This is amazing. It says the hearts of kings are in the hands of Hashem. Now, what does that mean? So that means no free will? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that these are global things. When a guy is a leader of a country, and maybe once the leader of the entire free world, as it was called, that's not an accident. That's like, that, that could change everything about everything. So, so God's not, he's directing it, but he's allowing certain things. What's he allowing? How, how does, you know, and this is amazing when you think about like democracy or, or dictatorship, in a certain way, it's the same, in a certain sense. The difference is, in a democracy, you're supposed to vote for the people, for the person you want to lead or the leaders you want. The dictatorship, someone grabs it. But if the people resist it enough, they will overthrow that dictator. Sometimes they don't. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes years because they don't have the gumption to do it and the power to do it. But in a certain sense, the leader represents the heart of the people. Where are the people at? And so I don't want to say this in a derogatory way to the president of the United States. I really don't. Because I have to give honor to the, to, the, to the office. However, you have to wonder what's going on here. What's going on here? The leader is the sum of the people. And I, I ask a question, and I, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be um, offensive, 
but I, I do mean to, to understand the deeper significance of what we're saying right now. The president of the United States at present clearly has certain mental issues going on. I think it's fairly clear. How bad? I, I don't know. I, you know, but it, it, it's certainly clear that that things are not are not fully cognizant in in, in various ways. How much? Uh, it's a good question. But how does that happen? As a leader of the country, not have all his faculties. What's the deeper meaning of that? You know the deeper meaning of it is, and I, I hate to say it, but it, it's another outgrowth of this atheism philosophy as it just goes out of control. It's because the people have lost their most basic common sense. It's unbelievable. It, it's, it's literally unbelievable. You could look at something and I, I, I mean, look, and I, again, I, I don't, it's not politics. I, I'm trying to give an understanding of it, but I do have... It's like when, when, when the, 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 one of the judges of the Supreme Court of land does not, can't define a man or a woman, we're, we're not in a stage of most basic common sense. America has, not all of America, but a large portion of America has lost their most basic common sense, the things that are, and I want to tell you something, if you think I'm crazy because I'm saying it, which I know you don't because you're here on this call, but <laughs> isn't that crazy I'm saying it? The craziest thing is five years ago, nobody would have said it. The same people who are telling you today that you need an open border, men or women, women or men, what? Five, 10 years ago, they weren't saying that. Nobody was saying it. So how, how are they so sure they're right today when five years ago, that was insanity? So we, we have gotten to a place, and this is where I want you to understand this. We've gotten to the world where once you take God out of the picture, there's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no up, there's no down, there's no good, there's no bad. You create insanity. You create literally dysphoria. You don't know what you are. You know, one of the most fundamental aspects of a human being, and I, I talked about this once before, you know, Descartes wrote, you know, many, many volumes to explain, you know, how do I know I exist? I don't exist. And he came up with his solution. I think, therefore, I am. Okay. People argue with it. That's fine. But there's an old question. Do I know I exist? You know? I, there was like a story. I think there was a guy in, uh, uh, how did it go again? This kid went to... Uh, he went to college and he came back and his father said, what'd you learn? He said, uh, he said to him, uh, I, 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 um, I forget the line. I got the, I got the joke in Forge. But basically the line was the kid said, you know, I learned, I don't know if I exist. And the father smacked in his face. Now tell me I didn't smack you. So, so what it was, was that there's a certain philosophy that you're making that deep down intrinsically, you all know you exist. In Torah, it's called the Das. It's called the most fundamental basic aspect of the human being that I know it to be true. You want to write a thousand pages to prove I exist? Okay, great. I, maybe we may not read it. But if you don't know you exist, you got a problem. You do know you exist because it's the most fundamental aspect of being a human being. I know. I just know. So when a person says now, I don't know if I'm male, if I'm female, if I'm this, if I'm that, the most basic understanding of human common sense of logic has escaped many of the American people. And that's the reason why a leader could be put in that's a rubber stamp for an agenda. That's what's happening. Because I don't know, just point me, what's, what's the right thing to say? And ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is where, you know, we talked about before, you know, why the world went so nuts. So here today, I'm tying it to you, to the idea of, of taking God out of the picture. And then there's this dysphoria and anarchy. Anarchy, I mean, what America is, is facing anarchy right now. Because, but I'm trying to explain to you why. 
because it's no longer a place where I'm saying freedom to strive for what I think is true. That's not what it is. Freedom to get what I want. And give me that, give me yours, give me yours is coming next because that's what, that's what it's about. That's the problem. Now, I got one more piece and then we're gonna try to get to some of the solution. And the second piece I have, this is honestly, I hate to say it, it's even more problematic, even more problematic. Because a lot of people, a lot of people who have common sense and you could talk to and might hear are experiencing something that has never happened on this level before in history. You have a thing of massive brainwashing. It's massive, it's literally, I mean, I can't think of a clear massive brainwashing. If you say your opinion, that's it. We can destroy you. In Torah law, there are serious, serious offenses to say something negative about somebody. But today, if I think your opinion is wrong, I can vilify you, destroy you, call you a Nazi, call you whatever I want, and everyone in the crowd is going to just jump on the bandwagon. And that's a massive brainwashing you've never seen before with social media. And this is where the danger comes in. Because the kids who don't know any better are being brainwashed constantly. I do not know what I would have thought growing up as a kid watching television. You know, when I was a kid, it's like, you know, the racy stuff was the Brady Bunch, you know? Like, <laughs> it was like, you know, oh no, I love Lucy. What trouble did Lucy get into now? You put it on the TV today, and a kid, a little a kid, watches something. And says, "Is this reality? Is this right? Is this wrong?" And you're inundated with a brainwashing that even Mickey Mouse is now supposed to brainwash you to believe this dysphoria of reality. This is, ladies and gentlemen, I, as I start this series, and I want to get to the beauty of America because it is the 4th of July and America is, is a, a great country and we need to save the country. We need to save the country. Now, I'll get to that in a second, but this is the process here. We have gone from a time of 2,000 years in the beginning where God said, anyone could find me. People, their desires took them all crazy ways. They went where they went. Abraham, then we have this new stage. And then people are having, Abraham is given a system of truth and people are changing the truth and having their own truths with their problems. Third stage that we're in now is that there's no longer a place of truth. There is no truth. The, the founding fathers of America never thought that. They thought everyone is going to stay for, I believe in this. But someone say, I believe in nothing. I don't believe in anything that, that they weren't planning on. So there were certain basic, you know, understandings that they set up. And now all of a sudden the world is, what do you mean? Nothing, there's, there's nothing. There's no, there's no up, down, or I mean, no male, female. There's nothing. It's all, it's, all, it's all random. That's the new world. And this is a really serious problem. So what can we say positive on, on 4th of July weekend here for you all? And this is what I, I always want to come back to. Even though I've painted this picture, you have to remember, the world is going to a process. It cannot be derailed. It's not possible. Hashem set the world up. There's a process. We have a 6,000-year process of a limit of where it's going to go until we come to the new phase of understanding and reality. And this last phase only has maximum 180 years. So, you know, again, it's a lot, long time, but the world is getting towards the a point of understanding. And as we get close to that point of understanding, as it says, that uh, one opinion is that before the Mashiach comes, the people will be completely insane. Or Kula Rishoyim, will all be crazy. They'll, they'll, they'll all be, they'll, they'll, they'll have, they won't have, they won't have sense. They'll, 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 and literally we're seeing that in front of our eyes. What can we do? Well, first thing is, is to understand that Hashem is running the world. 
So don't get too discouraged from what I'm telling you because I just need to point it out. The great country that was built on freedom became now freedom to give me what I got to get because you owe it to me. Rather have the government control and give it out than have freedom to do what I believe is true. That was never what America was built on. So we got to understand that's a, that's a massive culture thing. But Hashem is running the world. One. Two, what we have to do is wherever country you're in, I mean, I, you know, I, people in different countries, but this is a global thing here because they, they, the world has changed. It became the, the idea to become this global village. It has happened and it, it, it will keep happening. Um, and so, you know, everyone is adopting the same mindsets that are being created in this, in this bubble. Ladies and gentlemen, what you got to do now is you got to try to take back your countries. You really have to. Now, you might not be able to, you might not be able to, you might be able to buy your, by yourself. But you have to try to educate your kids and your grandkids and uh, how, how to guard them from that, 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 uh, that smartphone and everything. I, I don't know. In Israel, in Israel, the rabbis are very strict and, and most people in the more observant world don't have a smartphone because you just have an open up box to everything. So I don't know how you control that. I mean, parents should get as many filters as they can and try to teach their kids how to, how to communicate and, and what not to say. And to understand, like, you know, like the values that come out are, are completely contrary. Like, the, you know, I, one time a student of mine said to me, the rabbi, say something on Facebook, you know? Um, you know, I want you to say, so I said an opinion on something that it was a bit controversial. But, but I knew people were seeing it not correct and I wanted to straighten it out. So I, I said it in a very respectful way. And then like people all of a sudden who would never talk to me as I'm, I'm the rabbi, I wouldn't talk to me to my face. They felt very free on Facebook to just like, Poof. you know why? Because it's a vehicle that's called Lush and Haro. That's what it is. It's a vehicle of slander. It's a vehicle of Lush and Haro. So you got to teach your kids and your friends and people you can influence not to see the world this way. So what's happening right now is why is the world crazy? Because it's gone in this whole process. And now it's in the process of meaninglessness. And that's why it's getting so nutty tar. You want to know why it's getting out of control? Because there's no meaning to anything. It's all random. And so people are just creating cr havoc. <laughs> that's something right now that we have to first pray, <laughs> ask Hashem to help us, especially in our countries, especially, especially as Noahides. Why? Because you don't want to get swept up into other people's insanities. So it, we have a responsibility to influence, to try, we can. But especially, you know, we saw the story of Sodom, you know, uh, you know, there, there weren't enough people there. Well, you know, yes, you know, in Abraham's prayer to God during the time of Sodom, if there had been 10 righteous people, they would have been, they would have been saved the whole town. And if there were a few righteous, they got saved. So what got saved? Abraham's merit. Okay. But, but, but there has to be the goodness there in the, in the nation. And there is There's a lot of it still in America. That's why we're doing this, because I think there's an incredible ability now in the world, that's America, in the world, Canada, every place, everybody, Australia, there is, a, 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 and this will happen. I guarantee you it will happen. There will be a point where people will understand and the negative people who refuse to understand will fade away, and those who understand will continue and thrive in the ultimate Revelations of the world, times Mashiach and, and what's coming, and things that, that we are promised to happen. But right now we're in we're in the battle, in the battle. So you have to have no gods directing it. Don't get discouraged. And two, do everything that you can to speak up because you're speaking up not just as a political person. You know, every group, every political group has their own. I hate to say it, their own idiots. You know, like. Uh, you know, I hear some people talking on both sides. I'm like, really? That's what you believe? That's what you think? 
not really thinking, but you're 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 a, you're a you know lifetime politician. So you say you say the words, okay? and there are but there are smart people too who do hear some stuff, and and it's important to go into and, and to let your voice be heard. The 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 I mean, what's going on of like you know shutting people down who disagree, you know the disinformation the nineteen eighty four disinformation committee. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. The, 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 you know, I know one thing. When someone lies all the time, they tell me someone else is a liar. I'm not going to believe that guy either. The second guy, I know the first guy. So, so we have to understand that now and, and not let ourselves get shut down. Not as an agenda, because I need to stay there. No, because God wants you to do what is right. And, and, and when someone says something to you that's wrong and, and you just kind of like agree with it, you're, you're letting negativity flourish because you're not disagreeing in a respectful way. But no, this is wrong. Okay, you're this and you're that. You think you're so smart. Okay, great, great. Let's see you saying five years from now and the whole thing falls apart. So that's my... <laughs> That's my thought. And that is how I tie together the last of, of the world getting to where it is now, Tar. That's why it's as nutty as it is. We got to go and try to, you know, to, uh, to stand up. But uh, it was an old Bob Dylan song called God on Our Side. So you're on the side of, of right. When you're on the side of right, you'll eventually win. Just stick with it. Okay. That is my thought. We're opening it up to everybody.